check, check, check. You know the vibes, your boy DJ Shango vibes. I told you I'm gonna be interviewing different people, different content. Um, so before I interviewed some DJs, and I got some more DJs lined up for y'all to come through some of y'all favorite DJs, you know what I'm saying? I told you I'm gonna have different content, different aspects of life. Um, I'm not a prankster. I really be outside, so I can't be pranking people. So my content is gonna be like real. So bringing live to you. I probably never heard of her yet, but she's outside. This is a wonderful artist. And let me show y'all something. I don't just interview people to interview people. I'm, I don't ride nothing. You understand what I'm saying? I don't ride no waves. I don't ride a wave until I feel like it's rideable. You understand what I'm saying? I don't ride with no wave until I feel like that wave is what's up. This is TK from Brooklyn, and her wave is what's up. So I'm going to bring to introduce to y'all TK from Brooklyn. And um, she's basically going to take it away and tell y'all the rest. TK, what's good? I'm outside. What's up, New York City? What's up, world? I ain't going to cap to you. Like he said, y'all might not know me yet, but I'm outside. That's right. And one thing before this interview starts, I just want to tell everybody that my music is 100% me. And it's completely different from what you guys usually listen to. And... That's another reason why you might not have had heard of me, but it's still not stopping me from coming outside and promoting what I got to promote, you know? So we're about to start this interview and see what's going on. So TK, tell me something. You look, you look young, right? <laughs> okay. So I know a lot of people probably ask you this question. So for the people, can you tell them how old you are, please? Right now, I am 27. I will be 28 in November. Okay. Ooh. I'm a Sagittarius. Shout out to the Sag. That's what's up. How long you been doing this music thing? Ah, uh, I'm not even going to lie. I want to say it, and I'm not going to say it to be a part of anything, you know, to be clouded or anything. Um, I am musically inclined, so music has been a part of my life since I was born. You understand? I've been physically playing musical instruments since I've got into a school. Um, from there, I progressed to Steel Pan, which is one of our, when I say our, I am from Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. Right. Nice. So that's I'm, that little accent I'm hearing. Right. There we go. Right. I call that my soca voice. Like, when I put <laughs> that on is when I'm playing soca. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yes, so, that too. You know, yeah, when I'm around right. my people, it does come out too, right? right. So, uh -huh. basically, So you, you born know, in Trinidad though? So, uh, yes, born in Trinidad. I came okay. to this country in 2001. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like... Damn. What you feel like from Trinidad and you was playing steel pants, right? You're playing steel I feel pans. like the music mm -hmm. it took it took a time for me to come out with me being in the studio, but with all the musical background like the piano or let's say what it was, the violin, let's say the flute from school, then progressing to steel pan from Trinidad. It took some time to get in the studio and not only because I didn't want to, it was just because growing up in the 90s and early 2000s, my country wasn't as big as that we just say New York, because at them times, the 90s and the early 2000s, we had R&B. We had hip hop that was jumping in America. So for an outsider to say a Caribbean people, a Caribbean person to come from where they came from and make something and be big in New York, United States was, it was something. And it was also something as an upcoming artist to be scared about. Mm -hmm. You know, so it took time to get in the studio and adapt to having my voice be heard on a different platform, like an, on a voice platform, not on a musical instrument platform, you know, because so, music speaks volumes in different ways. You could speak to somebody in an instrument. You could speak to somebody through the song. You could speak to somebody through, you know, it, music is, is just... It has a lot of elements to it. So it took some time to get in the studio around the time that I was growing up. But I got into it and it's been about, let's say, 
We can say 10 plus years okay. that I've been doing studio music. So it's like, say, 17, 18. Correct. You said 10, 20. Correct. Okay, so let me ask you a question. I just want to touch back on a little bit of the instruments, right? You used to play live instruments? Yes. Like what? Piano. Oh, wow. So, so you got a little bit of Lizzo in you then because Lizzo play live instruments as well. Is that, I wasn't saying you have Lizzo in, but I mean, that helps you be musically inclined, I would say. You understand it, what I'm saying? You see, it does. It gives me a, um, I feel like with the piano, it gives me more of a, a foundation. It gives me a grounding because piano, especially at them times, you thinking about something structured. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about classical. Yes. You're thinking about yes. something, mm -hmm. something that Maestro. is professional. Yes, yes you understand? Mm -hmm. So at that time, you're not thinking to not even be yourself because you can't really express trying to play, you know, play mm -hmm. some keys during the piano. So you have mm -hmm. to really kind of keep your key, your, 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 um, your tone. You have to set your tone. You have to really keep your cool when you're playing the piano and stuff. So I felt like piano for me, was more of a grounding it was more of a for me for music it was more it was more connecting me to structure with music okay you understand because mm -hmm. you can't really express too you can express it through song but you mm -hmm. can't really express it through body you don't understand right. or exactly. word through the piano yes, through you understand piano. what i'm saying mm -hmm. so like it just gave me more vibe. right exactly mm -hmm. so it mm -hmm. just gave me more of a structure it gave me more of a a, you know, a, just more of an assertive way for music. Okay. So, um, with that being said, um, the other instrument that I played, I named um, the violin and the flute, but my you other played? sisters played that. But no, okay. I my other instrument that I played personally was um, the African drums. Really? Yes. I've played the African drums, and then I tried to play the, there's an electric guitar mm -hmm. one time, for mm -hmm. one summer, actually, for a church. Okay. Oh. That one of my aunts was trying to take me to. So you've been about, actually. around music for a, right. a, for your whole exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I also have um, a brother in mm -hmm. Trinidad. So my mother has five kids in total. Mm -hmm. You understand? Actually, I'm not gonna lie. We have six. She has six. Mm -hmm. The firstborn died when it was a baby. Oh, sorry. So that. it's five. Mm -hmm. The two boys is in Trinidad, and the three girls is in America. Okay. So my oldest brother that is in Trinidad right now, he is very, you know, he's not, all right, last night, I'm not going to overdo it, but I'm going to say how I feel. He's mm -hmm. very big. Mm -hmm. You know, he does his thing. He has a lot of videos out, a lot of content. He has his own promotion where he goes out. He does his own shows. He has his own fan base. He does mm. his thing. You understand? So he's big in Trinidad. Okay. Right. All right. You That's understand? Dope. Dope. So we are just musically inclined. Like we have music in us. Music is just a part of us. Mm -hmm. Mind you, me and my brother, brothers grew up in different countries. Mm. He was raised in Trinidad. Okay. Mind you, I was born there, but I was raised in America. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because I was born in 95. Okay. We came here in 2001. That's six, six years, years later. Yes, so right. that's not too much. No you understand? Time, right. Mm -hmm. So basically, and even though I might have been back and forth, mm -hmm. I still was, I grew up in America. Right. But I am Trinidadian. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. And I never forget where I come from and mm -hmm. who I am, Absolutely. which is a female from Trinidad and Tobago. Absolutely. So boom. Um, yeah, but with that being said, um, African drum. So that's and, a question. Mm -hmm. African drum. Right. See, I know about a bass drum. You ever heard of a bass drum? Yes. What? I heard of several bass drums, right? Several bass drums, right? right? Okay, so like, like your mouth, like, like your mouth. Right, so what um, would be the difference between like a bass drum and an African drum, if you could kind of... Is African drum what we've seen in like, put your hands where I could see in Busta Rhymes video where it was all boom, 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 isn't that type mm. of... You know okay, so that's saying? one form of a bass drum. Right? Okay, copy. Boom, that is definitely yeah. one form of a bass drum. Then mm -hmm. you have, um, then you have another bass drum that you know you could play on a regular drum set. Okay, okay. and it have a bass drum. Okay. Yeah, it has a nice boom. Mm -hmm. You know what? Boom. Mm -hmm. So you have, you know, you have several types of bass drums, but mm -hmm. the bass, well, the drum that you're talking about, and well, the African drums that I played and the yes. bass drums you're talking about is yes, it is different. The African drums that I played was. Um, it was it was a personal drum, and it wasn't a bass drum per se. Per se. Copy, copy. It had places where we could place our hand to mm -hmm. give it that bass octave, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a bass drum. Gotcha. It's originally an African drum, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, 
but also with steel pan we have base pans okay so i've been introduced to several bass mm -hmm. instruments mm -hmm. but i i've actually played uh a tenor bass okay. in steel pan mm. before so that was actually one of my first and only bass plays okay you understand okay right and i've played for actually one of the top three bands in new york city pan sonatas steel pan right steel okay. pan okay and um oh. the years that i played with them i didn't play this the um tenor bass i played the tenor pan which is i guess you can say is her older brother I feel I figured a tenor pan is more feminine, not even feminine, but it's more of a female pan, mm -hmm. and the bass is more of a male pan. Okay. So when I say tenor pan and tenor bass, it's two different pans, but I feel like it's in the same family. Okay. You understand? So I call mm -hmm. it his older brother, her okay. older brother, right? Mm -hmm. So um, and the tenor pan is a singular pan, and it has more higher um tones gotcha. on the pan. Gotcha. The bass pan in um, steel pan has more lower, lower tones, okay. right? So it gives you that more bass feeling. Okay. And yeah. I played that for like I, I could say one summer. Okay. And then I went on to tenor pan, and but that was it. But um, the the um African drums and the bass, you can just you can infuse bass in an African drum, but it's not really a bass drum. It's not really a bass drum. Right. Okay. And did you enjoy playing doing this? Yes. Yes, I I have. I have actually performed places doing this African drum. And when I got introduced to it, actually, it was in my junior high school. I went to IS-252. It's called Arca S. Somers at the time. It's on Kings Highway. In Brooklyn? Mm-hmm. In okay. Brooklyn, New York. Okay. And um, it's crazy that the year that I was graduating, the school was getting phased out. Okay. So that was the last, our grade was the last grade, the last school, the last class to be mm -hmm. Arthur S. Soma's I two, IS-252. Okay. It was turning into a charter school, right? Mm -hmm. So it was, it was an awesome year mm -hmm. to be in that school. And when I tell you they brought out all the stops, they brought out all the stops. I got introduced to Cop Weta, which was a big, it was a, not a big thing, but it was a big thing for me because it was different What's capoeira like me capoeira is, is a brazilian form of martial arts mm -hmm. so for that to happen even just in brooklyn that's what i'm saying new that's york kinda, yeah. it was kind not even it was rare but it was just on you couldn't you couldn't not grab that opportunity absolutely you couldn't not go to that school absolutely you could be good yeah you couldn't not go to that school so mm -hmm. because i chose that school because literally number one because of that Mm -hmm. I've never done it a day in my life, and because they just, they had something different. So wait, you telling me you, you took up some training in Capoeira, or? In that school, yes. Oh, absolutely, okay. In so that got, school. So you have some martial arts training. Yes, correct. Okay, so they'd be yeah. a little badass, you might kick somebody in the face. Uh, correct. Hey, and hey, I did martial, hey, I did the Capoeira like in that, there, I, like I started that. it in there, and then from when I graduated, <laughs> I actually continued it for a couple of years after that, okay. after I graduated. Okay. So yeah, I have a couple of, I graduated from that white belt, yeah, mm. they have levels to their stuff, absolutely. but their colors are not the entire, well, it is the entire belt, but they have like two levels they have like where you get before you get to the entire belt you have like um the tip of the belt will be that color of the entire belt so, okay. so let's say i'm going to be a yellow belt mm -hmm. before i get to the entire yellow belt my tip will be yellow first okay to let everybody know that i'm not a white belt mm -hmm. but i'm on my way to a yellow belt gotcha. so they had let it was different but mm -hmm. it was it was their own form of martial arts gotcha. Bra brazilian form of mm -hmm. martial arts yes. right so mm -hmm. yeah it was the best experience and let me see so from what i see from capoeira right it's mm -hmm. like it's like a dance type yes thing. it is right it's it like is a dance it is a dance art. dance fight basically okay, dan a dance fight. it is mm -hmm. it is and it's it's a lovely dance fight um people sleep on it a lot a lot of people don't hear about it as well mm -hmm. and if you notice a few movies growing up they had it you ever seen that movie with jet lee and um uh what's his name sorry rest in peace dmx was yeah, in it yeah um, Romeo um, must die. And what's his name? Well, I think uh, it's Anthony, must die. Anthony Anderson was in it as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That one had some capoeira in it. And okay. that was a big movie that a lot of black people have watched mm -hmm. that don't know about the sport. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. And from then when I seen it as well, I fell in love. I'm like, what is this? It was it was just awesome. Like mm -hmm. the dance fight is perfect. That mm -hmm. is the best part of it actually, because to infuse dancing, flipping, fighting. Mm -hmm. 
protecting yourself, yourself self, self defense. defense mm-hmm. You understand? Because mm-hmm. when you think of martial arts, you're not thinking of attacking somebody, or you're not thinking of you know, you're just thinking of self, self defense. defense. You're defending thinking yourself. of trying to defend yourself Absolutely. from any form of attack against mm-hmm. you, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it was just it was just a perfect. Perfect form of martial arts that I fell in love with. And you learned this in Brooklyn? Yes. That's Brooklyn. Crazy. Junior high school. In junior high school. <laughs> Very good. Um, I have a question. So what was it like for you coming from Trinidad and coming to Brooklyn or coming to New York? Like, for example, like, I hear people say, like, they was, like, impressed by seeing, like, the big buildings. Because in Trinidad, maybe the buildings is... When you go to Manhattan, right. you see these high rises and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. How was it for you? Were you impressed seeing that? How was it for you? You know what I mean? Like, coming from, like, the island, coming to the city. You know what I mean? Were you All impressed? Right. Were you, like, in awe? Did you fall in love with New York when you first came here? Did you miss back home? You understand what I'm saying? See, when I came here, I was kind of young. And, um... Most of my memories is what my parents created for us. Mm-hmm. They brought a lot of their Trinidadian traditions okay. with them. Mm-hmm. So when I say that, let mm-hmm. me give you a phrase my mother used to give me growing up. We live in the projects, but we are not of the projects. Mm-hmm. You understand? And with that being said, that. Mm-hmm. We, never, um, we never went outside to uh, play with the other kids. We never did the hopscotch, the double dutch. Oh. What we you experienced... played Skelly? You never played Skelly? In school with oh, other friends okay, and okay, stuff okay, like that. Okay, 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 but not in the projects. Okay, gotcha. But <laughs> um, with growing up in New York, Brooklyn, New York, it was different because... And it was crazy because the people in our building, they knew us. Mm-hmm. They knew of us Mm -hmm. because, like, say we had a a year where we had to sell some candy and we would go door to door and we'd be like, yeah, we're such and such from 1D. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, yeah, we know you. We see you go to school every morning and we, people know of us, Mm -hmm. but we don't affiliate ourselves with them. Copy. What I can say, the, the best thing that happened with that was that with their strict traditions, came Steel Pan. And it just so happened that Steel Pan was right directly across the street from where I lived. So where you live? I yeah. lived on um, Park Place between mm. Albany and Troy in um, Crown Heights. Okay, okay. So I lived in Crown Heights. Right. Okay. I lived in Crown Heights. And Crown and Heights, if I'm not mistaken, I know there's like a big Jew part of Crown Heights. Right. And you see, that's the craziest thing. Back in the day, it was barely that. When I was growing up, it was barely that. And as I was growing up, it started to progress. And as of right now, present day, speaking of today, the Jews are taking over completely. Really? So I have got to see Crown Heights. I'm not even going at three stages. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I got to see it as Crown Heights. Black. Mm-hmm. Dominated by dominated, black. Dominated, yes. Mm-hmm. Like, then I got to see it as... Jewish, mm-hmm. coming in, mm-hmm. sneaking in. Mm-hmm. Then as I left and came back to visit Crown Heights, mm-hmm. I come to see that the Jews had, took them over. they took it over. Took they them came over. and they stayed yeah. and they tried to, you know, they're making it home. Mm-hmm. So I, it, it's, it's bittersweet, but I still love Crown Heights. Absolutely. I'm not even going to lie. Because you learn Capoeira, you right. learn... Right. The steel pan yes. directly mm-hmm. across the street. Yes. Like, it was... it, it Everything worked out. So that kind of reminds you of home when you see the steel pan. That too. Not only it reminded me of home, it gave me a chance to be outside with my community. Mm-hmm. With my block that I wasn't able to grow up with and interact with as a child. Because my parents wanted safety for their mm-hmm. kids. So... Being that I couldn't go outside and, you know, go to the park regularly with a few kids, sleep over, do this, whatever the case is, uh-huh. I, with the steel pan being right across the street, I got to interact. I did get to play some um, double dutch, play some basketball. I got to interact because we was in the schoolyard and we was amongst people of different ages. Okay. So I did get to experience stuff that I thought I wasn't going to experience because I don't want to say I was being caged away or locked up, but I was just being protected. And And keeping your culture as well. Yes, Mm -hmm. because 
these are my parents. These are their first time in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. So who am I to judge them mm -hmm. of their kids? That for, you know, like yeah. it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So you know, and when you grow up, you start to think about certain things and you start to not, you know, be mad about certain things because as kids, you can't, you know, you can't help but get mad. Mm -hmm. Ma, why can't I go out and do this? Mm -hmm. Why can't I go to the park? Why mm -hmm. can't I go to the pool? Mm -hmm. You understand? But growing up and understanding where you came from, what was going on, what mm -hmm. was happening, and even while they talk about it, having flashbacks mm -hmm. of it, mm -hmm. it helps because mm -hmm. it's like you couldn't do anything. You mm -hmm. can't fault them. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. But they also tried. Mm -hmm. They gave me steel pen, which was in the vicinity of where I wanted to do certain things, which was play basketball, throw okay. a basketball, okay. do double dutch, do okay. hopscotch on, mm -hmm. the, on the playground. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Certain mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that gave me the American experience because my Trinidad experience is not hopscotch and double dutch. It's definitely steel pan or mm -hmm. uh, a arcade and care, you know, by KFC, mm -hmm. getting mm -hmm. a $5 box of, you know, something, mm -hmm. like, something like that. Absolutely. Growing up. So, it wasn't, it wasn't... It wasn't bad and it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't 100%. Because, of course, everybody's going to miss home. Everybody's going to miss when they come from. Everybody's going to, you know, but my parents made it what it, they could. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to lie. It had times where my mother it had a time we had annual bus rides every mm -hmm. summer. Whether it was to Sesame Place, it was to Splish Splash, Dorney Park. Okay. One year we would choose it and we would have bus rides every mm -hmm. summer. That's mm -hmm. what I grew up on. I grew okay. up on bus rides. Mm -hmm. You understand? I grew up on... Stuff like that, boat rides. Mm, okay. You understand? I didn't grow up on, um, you see, the American way. They know a lot of basement, bashment parties. Okay. Mm -hmm. Granted, I am Caribbean, but mm -hmm. I am from the Trinidad side. I am mm -hmm. not from the dance hall sure. reggae gotcha. side. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I did go through a lot of, I did go to some um, bashments, some basement vibes, mm -hmm. some, you know, but now how was that? If you don't mind me just, just touching on it, how, how was that? It was regular. Okay. It was it was it was regular. It was just like being at a Trinidad party, but mm. you know, on a slight different like just reggae level. That's it. You understand? Okay. That's mm. it. It mm. was just on a reggae level. And mm. it wasn't nothing because it was music. Right. And it was music that I was a I was accustomed to, that I grew up also grew up on, mm -hmm. that I am used to. That's why certain most of my music is the way it is now. Mm -hmm. Certain things that I do. You understand that like when I play one of my songs, you're gonna hear an introduction and you're gonna hear an ending and they're gonna sound alike. And that's kind of like music that I grew up on. Mm -hmm. You understand? I, I grew up on music with rhythm. I grew mm -hmm. up on music with harmony. Mm -hmm. So of course it's gonna be in me to bring it out. Mm -hmm. And I'm bringing it out in my own way, ways that New York, the world has ever, <laughs> probably ever seen. Copy. Yeah. Um, did you, so, did you have any acquaintances with any other Caribbean people? Because I know Crown Heights have the Jews. Right. And if it's not the Jews, that one time it was a lot of black Americans. Because I'm also from Crown Heights. Mm -hmm. When I first came, I came, I grew up in the crack era, you know what okay. I'm saying? And at this time, it was a lot of Americans, you feel me? And you had a lot of Caribbean, Caribbean people migrating from the Caribbean and coming to Brooklyn and coming to Crown Heights. Did you have any Caribbean friends? The craziest part about it, and this is what I tell people a lot, um, junior high school was the best years of my life. And I'm not saying that in a, a little way. I'm mm -hmm. saying it in a big way. Mm -hmm. Junior high school got me ready for the world. Mm -hmm. Not high school, not college, mm -hmm. not what came after that. Mm -hmm. And why do you say that? I say that because my junior high school was so versatile. Mm, so that's what I want to touch on. That, mm -hmm. and I think that it was the way it was, was because it was in the neighborhood that yes. I was in. Mm -hmm. You see, where my high school was on King's Highway, it's in Brownsville. Mm. We grew, I grew up in the 90s. That's a lot of... So when I say grew up too, I, yeah, I, was, I grew up in uh, Crown Heights. I yes. lived in Crown Heights. That's where my house was, where I lived in my head. Mm -hmm. Yes. But schooling is also, you spend... 90% as a kid, you spend most of your time of the in day school. at school, you understand? Facts. Especially if you have after school, yes, yeah, that's, you spend 90% of your time at the school. Mm -hmm. So, when I say grow up there in the 90s, too, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. And also, I had family out there, my father's mother lived out there, okay. So, um, mm -hmm. good for you. yeah, it was just all around, everything worked out, mm -hmm. and that 
that time, that place, it had everybody. It had Jamaicans. It mm -hmm. had Guyanese. Mm -hmm. It had Trinidadians. Yep. Yo, I'm talking about, yes, we did it. And then to go to a school that has things like Brazilian martial arts, mm -hmm. that's introducing me, introducing me to Amish country. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, they're introducing me to Harlem Globetrotters. Mm. I did my first performance from doing Capoeira at the Apollo. Mm. I went to a junior high school that did a lot for me. That in, not even it introduced New York to me. I'm not even gonna lie. Mm -hmm. right. Because okay, I guess it, you. You, you you understand what mm -hmm, I'm saying, mm -hmm, like. Mm -hmm. The New York culture, yeah. The New York way, mm -hmm. and then not to be bad on it or not to bring it, but um, I grew up where I was around a lot of Crips. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like we, the time and the place, it was just an awesome time and place to grow up. Mm -hmm. And the junior high school that I went to, I encountered a lot and experienced a lot that is in me today. Let me ask you a question. Did you ever get robbed in Brooklyn? Hmm. As black people, we don't like to say we got robbed. Keep, I, Somebody stole question. from us. I, I, Somebody I stole from us. I got robbed. I but got I'm robbed. not even going to say, to say, um, I like, robbed. I got, um, I got robbed, I got, I got jumped, I got all kinds of no, shit. No, I never got, um, <laughs> I never got and I did robbed all kinds of stuff too, point. but you know, uh huh. Never got robbed at gunpoint. Mm -hmm. I never got, um, I did have this one big physical altercation where I'm going to say it on record that I did not do anything. I didn't fight back. I didn't hit back. I didn't swing back. Nothing. Um, the most I did is probably push the girl back. And the most fights physically that I had, I could count on my one hand. Okay. That's cool. See, I'm a lover, not a fighter. And also... I am more comedic. Mm, okay. You see, I got class clown in my junior high school and my high school yearbook. Okay. So mm -hmm. I am funny at heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I don't like negative energy, negative vibes. See, I, see, the reason why I ask that question, people might say, why did he ask that question? I want to tap into who's the real you. See, a lot of people don't, like you said, won't admit that. Right. And, but it happened to a lot of people, even some of the baddest, realest dudes that we know. They took L's. Right, yeah. They took mad fact. W's too. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But they don't sing about the L's. Right. And the L's help you build your character, make you be also aware of who you are. Right. Because now you can say that you're a comedic. You understand what I'm saying? You don't want negative energy around you, right? Right. You right. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I just said So that's why I wanted to, you know, ask you about that. So go ahead and continue. So that's like you said, you don't like negative energy around you and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. You've always been comedic. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and... What's crazy is that uh, growing up, I left my mom's house when I was 15 years old. Okay. So. So you was outside. Since I was, was outside. outside. And. You had to see a lot. I, in Brooklyn. Had to go seen a, a lot, lot. Witnessed a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. Yeah, and this be. was the craziest mm -hmm. part. That's how TK came about. Okay. Because I was afraid. My voice even now is kind of still high pitched. It's feminine. It's girly. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a girl. Right. You understand? So. TK came about because I was afraid of being molested, raped. I'm talking, this is 2000s. This is New York City. Mm -hmm. This is the United States of America. America. Mm -hmm. This is a brand new country, mm -hmm. a brand new state, brand mm -hmm. new city. So TK came about because I was afraid of certain things. And when I'm telling you that it died it down, it didn't kill it 100%, but it died down a lot of attraction from male entities that yo you 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 just you you wouldn't believe a lot you think movies and tv shows is jokes and but when you are i don't even want to say the you you look pretty or ugly or, you know i don't want to define it like that mm -hmm. but when i say when you look of a certain way mm -hmm. or when you carry yourself a, a certain, certain way, way you understand and when you mm -hmm. attract Certain, certain people, mm -hmm. it, 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 it could it be either good or bad. Mm -hmm. And it when it turns out to, for it being mm -hmm. bad, mm -hmm. and you have a bad experience, you do everything in your power, especially if you're a female, a black female, 
You know, you do everything in your power to not let that experience happen again. Mm -hmm. And this was my way of... I go by my saying, it's even written on my social media, prevention is better than cure. What's your social media, by the way? Oh, my social media. My Instagram is at T-Q-U-E underscore E-P. Then my Facebook is T-K, T apostrophe Q-U-E, Borneo, B-O-R-N-E-O. So, um... Please follow, people. Please follow. Thank you very mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. But back to the story at mm-hmm. hand, um... Sorry if I threw nah, you off. Nah, you Um... <laughs> TK and how TK came involved. How TK yeah, became. I was talking about how the um it could be in a bad way, but right. um mm-hmm. how you take your experiences and so forth, right? And you said that's how TK was made and how TK came about. Shit. Yeah, it was. That's how it came about and stuff like that. But I was at a certain point. Damn it, it's all right. Um, all right. So it could be in a good way and it could be in a bad way. Like say in a sense, um, if. If, um, shit. Certain, like, I feel like certain experiences can make or break you, right? So I think you were saying that an experience that you was going through and things that you witnessed from, like, male entities and so forth made you who you are to a certain extent. That too. All right, so it did. Um, I'm trying to figure out which experience, because I had a certain experience that I was trying to tell you too that to relate to the whole story, because I know exactly what he was talking about. I'm just trying to figure that experience out, but I'm going to forget about it. But to go back to the story at hand, yeah, um, it could be good or it could be bad. And when it turns into that bad situation, you do everything in your power not to let that bad situation happen again. As a black female, you understand, growing up in anywhere. You just try not to let that repeat happen again. And I'm not saying, and I'm I'm not saying, and I'm not not saying that I've been through that experience. But I'm saying TK came about because I live by the same prevention is better than cure. And I wanted to prevent a lot of stuff that could have happened to me. And I'm not saying it didn't. I'm not saying it did. But I'm I'm saying that TK came about. To prevent it mm-hmm. and it died it down it mm-hmm. didn't kill it a hundred percent but it did prevent it mm-hmm. and that's how she stayed mm-hmm. tk is not me my name is tori you okay. understand so people that know me they know me by my real name and i feel like tk is not even it's not a it's not even a bad alter ego, or, or I feel like it's not even a wrong choice in my sense. Like, I felt like I could have went a lot of ways to prevent a lot of stuff from happening to me, you know? I could have stayed feminine and just stayed away from male contact. I could have seeked counseling. Some, you know, I could have did something else than transform into another person. Mm-hmm. You understand what I mean? But I felt like it worked out really good. Mm-hmm. Like, I love TK, and I also love Tori. Mm-hmm. So, so, what yeah. would be the difference between Tori and TK? Tori is more feminine. Tori okay. knows... Tori put on a dress? She wear a dress? Yeah, Tori, okay. like I said, is more feminine. <laughs> Tori knows that, not even... Yeah, when I say Tori too, I'm speaking for TK because TK is Tori. So, Tori is TK. Mm-hmm. TK is not Tori. Mm, okay. You understand? Okay. Tori okay. is TK, but TK is not Tori. Mm-hmm. So... When I'm outside being Tory, TK can never come out. Okay. But when I'm outside being TK, Tory, Tory can still. come out okay. because that's who I am. That Copy is that. me. Mm-hmm. So TK can be Tory, but Tory cannot be TK. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. I'm outside as Tory, you would never see me as this. Mm-hmm. You, would, you would never think that I was like this. Copy. You understand? So mm-hmm. if I'm outside like TK, Tory can come out. And that's the difference. Like um, She's more feminine and... She's just me, 100%. And so TK... that's the comedic side? That's the comedic side right. of you? Right. Yeah, the, that the both, the sides, both the sides is comedic. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, mm-hmm. that's just definitely... Yeah, that's me. That's the comedic side. That's the the brains of the operation, I guess. I, you know, I, I just... It's, that's just me, mm-hmm. you know? So, mm-hmm. um, excuse me. I feel like with this music stuff, too, people get to... People are going to see, and I think it's going to be for a first, because 
we've seen artists that are feminine and female. We've seen artists that are, um, we are see LG, a part of the LGBTQ community. You understand? We've seen artists that are not, they're female, but they're not showing that female. They are showing another side of them, mm -hmm. that male side. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm going to be one of the first artists. And then we also seen artists that kind of blends them. And we're going to bring it back to R.I.P., rest in peace, Aaliyah. Mm -hmm. She blends them. Okay. We're going to bring it up to, um, what's her name, Tiana Taylor. Okay. She blends them. Facts. You understand what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. I feel like I'm going to be the artist, artist, the artist to... Um, Bring out both. I'm going to show you both the female and the other LGBT community side of me that is going to kind of like send the world like, wait, this is the same person? Right. And then the music is also going to take you there because Tory music is not TK music. Mm, interesting. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when I do a Tory song, I'm going to look like Tory. When I do a TK song, I'm going to look like TK. So I feel like I'm going to be the first artist to even kind of do that mm -hmm. you because even missy elliott mm. you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. like everybody had their way and i feel like this is going to be my way mm -hmm. because people have their alter ego look at beyonce she has her alter ego that's sasha a fact. fierce that's a fact. you understand that's a fact now i'm showing you both i'm showing you tori and the alter ego mm -hmm. you understand and i feel like it's going to be it's going to be a good show for everybody and they're going to tune in and they're going to want to continue to watch and see and listen to what I got to hear, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> so I think I'm ready to get into some of this music. Like, okay. You know what I'm saying? We, we kind of got to run down on you. And this is going to our first interview. Hopefully, TK will be a, a regular here. So as we go along, small stories will be told. You know what I mean? Yeah, Maybe even stories that she forgot, she'll remember and so forth like got that. You. you know what I'm saying? So again, this is just an introduction, my people. Um, I want to introduce y'all to her music. Like I said, I don't jack stuff for no reason. Like, I'm I also DJ, so I feel like I'm also musically inclined, and I know I know talent when I hear it. Feel me? So I'm ready to play um, her first. This is her tune right now, and you could um, give, us some, give us some history of this tune and give us the, you know, the rundown on the tune. Um, this is her, the tune that she's um, promoting right now. All right, mm -hmm. so the song that I'm coming on right now is uh, a song that I've been working on for years. I'm talking about five plus years, and it's a song that is me and that I was scared to bring out. I'm now starting to promote it because not only the world is changing, New York is changing. Mm -hmm. And New York is, New York has always been, what you, what's the word? The New York has always been... Diverse. Die freaking verse, right? New York has always been diverse. We had everyone. Yeah, I just talked about the Jews. Mm -hmm. We had Jamaicans. We had mm -hmm. guys. We have everybody. In Brooklyn, they got we Russians. Have they got Polish. They, people got their own Bro, place. They and I'm not Spanish, even talking about for vacation. Bushwick. They yep. live here. Yep. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So New York mm -hmm. has come to a place right now where I feel that I am comfortable to release this kind of music and this kind of song where somebody or a handful of group of people would listen, you understand? Because when this song, when I made this song, I was, I'm telling you, I made probably about seven other songs after this and I've released songs on platforms after this and this has just been sitting there. And when I have started promoting this song to bring it out, the feedback was phenomenal. So like, that's the question. You people heard this song. You played. Yes. You, you sang it some. Yes, I sent it to a few people first. At first, I sent it to a few people. When I got the feedback, it encouraged me. It encouraged me to send it. Not even to send it, but to start um, using it, mm -hmm. promoting myself. Okay. So if I'm doing a show, even if it's underground, I would take a time. I would take a day. And not do a hip hop, I would do that song. Okay. You understand? And promote it. And it would have so much positive feedback that I would think, why haven't I done this before? But I know my reasons why I haven't done it before. Mm -hmm. So I still feel like it's good timing and everything is still working out. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing right now is I'm fully pushing it. You know, okay. I'm fully trying to promote it. I'm trying to get visuals out for it. 
the track is actually um, finalized in the studio. It's not out on all platforms yet. It will be within, by the end of the summer, it will be out on all platforms. All platforms. I just need to yeah. see if I need to, you know, want to do one more tweaks in the studio and definitely get a visual out before, but it's going to do, it's going to happen before the summer is over. So, um, when um, that happens. Have you sang this tune or, you know, performed this tune for a live audience? Yes, yes, how I have. Is the, how was the response? The, res the response was awesome. It was phenomenal. The response was, I'm talking about even during the performance, while they heard the song, while I was performing, the the crowd they just vibed with it they cheered they they loved it and it was it's something as an artist that you look forward to you ex not even expect you hope for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you hope for because mm -hmm. you never want to go up there and bomb mm -hmm. you never want to go up there and fail you never want to go up there and disappoint you understand right you yeah. always want to even you don't though get booed, right right even mm -hmm. though it is you being yourself you also want to make sure you are performing you are you are doing something for people. Mm -hmm. You understand. So anytime I make my music, even if they have to fall in love with just the introduction, they're gonna fall in love with a piece of the song. Gotcha. You. you understand. So I try to infuse, even if it's not in me, I try to infuse it in the music or the choreography of videos or photo shoots or okay. anything like that. Okay. Audience feelings mm -hmm. and um, audience perceptives. Mm -hmm. You understand. So. Yeah, that's just okay. that on that subject. Facts. <laughs> because right, so I love how they just love the song. Love I just loved it. Well, I love the song, too. I heard the song. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I love the song. <laughs> I heard the song. Um, this is the first song I actually heard, and I fell in love with it. And I don't know if it's because I'm from Trinidad as well, or I'm just kind of like her. I'm just an older version. Of, but I wasn't born in Trinidad. I was born here, but my parents are Trinidadian, and I grew up in Brooklyn. So I don't know if that's why it really <laughs> spoke out to me. You understand what I'm saying? But I love the tune. So here's the tune, y'all. Just is What's the name of it? The name of the song is actually called Where I'm From by me, yours truly, TK. Listen. <laughs> Well, I'm the man. Hey. Come, let me in. Come, let me in. Miss. Hey, me. The baby. Miss me. Don't be don't know. Don't be don't know. 
Alright, so I hope y'all heard that. I don't know if y'all heard that clearly. This is where I'm from featuring TK. She's the boss. She made that song. I'm in love with the song. That's just one of the songs. And like she said, she's from New York, a very versatile place, right? And she's also a very versatile artist. So I'm going to play another tune that I am happen to be in feeling. And um, you want to give us the little rundown on this tune here? Um, this song actually was my song. Um, I was challenged because I my music was, um, it was different. So I was challenged to do a drill song. Okay. And this is my version of a drill song. And I feel like um, I came close. You know, I did my thing. Because New York City drill songs are a bit different. You know, their words are a bit more faster and stuff like that. It's, but it still is giving me a drill vibe. And this is just my take on New York City drill music. So that's okay. just how it is. And who's, are you on this by yourself? Or? Oh, no. Actually, I have a, um, on this version right now, I have a feature with a guy that I grew up with. His name is Tommy Flea. I grew up with him as Chin, actually. That's my bro, my cuz, actually. And um, he's actually close with uh, Fabio Foreign and stuff. So to actually do this track with him was it, was, it was, it was dope. It was dope. And what's crazy is that we've always been in studios together growing up. I've had old tracks of him and other people, you know, while we was in studio sessions and stuff like that. But this is actually one of our first times actually getting to do a track together and it was actually not bad it came out dope and i appreciate him for What's the future the name, the name of it is actually odn and the o d n o is in octopus d is in donkey and is in nuclear um we could say odn it stands for on their necks on their necks on their necks that's what it stands for odn so um yeah i was actually thankful that he jumped on the feature with me. Hopefully, we get to do a video soon and show New York City what's going on my side of the ver uh, the drill songs. <laughs> All right. All right. So, hear this, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hell, yeah. TK, look out for her. She's a problem, y'all. Versatile. <laughs> she ain't buy this type of talent in the store. You heard? She born with it. Yeah. yeah. Get your boss man, tell him to act right. I don't need to just talk about the bagpipe. It's funny, he's feeling it. He just might just, just might just. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to the time for this my life. I'm going to act on top of the spotlight. I'm going to take your back to what's tight. You little bitch. Oh, yeah. We're not in the class while your hands raised. So you begging for mercy, you damn shit. I hope you need this for playing change. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this bitch, so I change names. I just picture forget it my own way.
Yes, sir. We all saw with that, so I'm trying to tell you. That was dope. That's dope. Thank I mean, you, thank you, it thank sounds you. like it sounds like some type trap to me. You heard? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm definitely jacking TK. Um, I'm feeling the style. I'm feeling the swag. I'm feeling all that. Um, so the next one I want to play for y'all one more. This one is a little controversial. You know what I mean? We got to give y'all like a little snippet of it. We can't get too crazy because we need to, she needs to um, finish some um, paperwork and stuff like that. But this is just to show y'all, this young lady's been on her grind. She's been researching. She's been hustling. She's been outside for a minute. Um, they got a song out right now that's like running New York. It's a reggae song. It's And um, come to find out, I learned today that she kind of had the song first. We ain't going to get too deep into it. I'm just going to drop the tune for y'all and, 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 and um, let y'all hear it. But there's a tune right now. And y'all tell me if y'all know the tune. But this, this young lady, yes, sir. she had the rhythm first, bro. So it's so crazy. And so when I heard this, I was just like, can we please just give the people a snippet so she, they can kind of understand that this young lady been outside for a minute. You know what I mean? So... So yeah. basically, the mm -hmm. history behind this song mm -hmm. is, um, I found this beat on YouTube, and nine times out of ten, when I find a beat on YouTube, I do the song to it, and when I have completed the song, I, um, I buy the beat, and I uh, upload the songs on the platforms. With this beat, I started the song, but I never finished, and by the time I did finish, it was, uh, I guess you could say a little bit time too late. But I do have in archives that I started this song years ago. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like I'm not even in no, I'm not even, even tr trying to be in no controversy with the artists that did make it big. I just feel like I just want my, uh, my song to be heard because I feel like it was a really good song and it's a really good single and it shows how, who I am as an artist, like as a Trinidad artist, you understand what I'm saying? So with that being said, this song was just, it was, um, it was a good thing to do. It was an awesome project to do. I'm not even going to lie. It's not even finished yet. That's why I'll be giving you the snippet. So, um, when it's a hundred percent done, I'm going to, um, I'm going to let you know, like, is out and go listen to it. Hopefully, this is one of the songs that get done before the summertime because this song is actually really big right now. So hopefully, it does get done before the summertime. I'm really hoping that it does. But um, if not, then um, yeah, we'll figure it out. But yeah, it's going to be released sometime this year. Honestly, right, drop the tune on them, please. If I, cause I press something and I kind of. Yeah, give me one second. It might be the series, yeah. One bar. Gotta take it closer to the door. You got it? Mm mm. I hit, I pressed something. My bad, y'all. I, I was kind of excited and I, I hit something and um, I don't know what happened here. Now the tune, the tune will go into hiding. So uh, let's, uh. let's give us a second. I hope y'all been enjoying the content so far, TK. You know what I'm saying? Um, from Brooklyn, Crown Heights, Trinidad, and all that. I hope y'all been feeling the vibe. I hope y'all see the versatility. I hope y'all understand that you can't buy this type of talent in the store. You know what I mean? Like, this, you have to be born with this. You know what I'm saying? This has to be in you. You can't make this up. I feel like a lot of artists nowadays, they trying. They trying, like in Trinidad, you'll say trying a thing. They trying a thing. You understand what I'm saying? But they don't really have it. And some of them busting. Some of them, some of them doing their thing. Like, kudos to them. I mean, you get your bag and stuff like that. Like, I feel like some of them is just doing it for a bag. They're just doing it for bread and, have, and what have you. But some... We got to get back to a place where we do it for the love of music, you know what I'm saying? For the love of the art, you understand what I'm saying? So I feel like TK is one of those artists that's doing it for the love of the art, you understand what I'm saying? So I hope y'all could, since the Jumbie right now, you see we call it the Jumbie. The Jumbie trying, that's to, crazy. trying to stop us right now. That's from, a fact. Oh, you can't it. find it? Damn. Can't find it? You just have to play um, another version of it. Yeah. So this is the, we're going to play a different version. The Jumbie is just like, it's crazy. It's crazy. That's a be, fact. Sometimes some energies be trying to stop you from being being great. Maybe it's a reason. Everything happened for a reason, too. So, that, too. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to knock it. We ain't going to, we're going to do what we do. Like I said. We'll work around so it. We'll we're going to work it around it. We'll right? figure it out. Man. All right, we'll figure it out. So listen to this. I 
don't know if y'all heard this, if y'all familiar with this rhythm. Y'all should be very familiar, but listen to who had it first. Telling you, I'm not ready for what's going on. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Let me And this is the version that uh we're gonna be introducing Tori to the world. So you understand? That's it. Yes, sir. All right, so like be I outside. said, we got to give y'all that snippet. But I don't know if y'all know the rhythm. Y'all should know the rhythm. I'm not going to say much. You understand what I'm saying? If y'all outside, I'm supposed to know what time it is. This young lady been outside. She had this first. You understand what I'm saying? She gave you the history. She told you what it was about. She just saying do this and do that. You understand what I'm saying? But if she would have, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you see the talent, y'all? Again, y'all, I might even say what's up. I might even take it easy. All right, again, y'all, this is your boy DJ Shango Vibes. TK Brooklyn. I hope y'all enjoyed this. And um, yeah, we'll see y'all again, all right? Yeah, see y'all outside. Um, what's outside. your Instagram one more time before we leave, please? Run it. What's your Instagram? My E. My fucking Instagram is T Q U E underscore E P. If y'all feel all her, right. follow her, you heard? Please. And thank you. Yes, right. sir. Anything else you want to say, TK? Nah, I just love y'all, man. Just keep in tune with me. I got a lot of stuff in store for y'all. Different kind of music. I just want y'all to groove to it, vibe with it. Tell me y'all critiques and stuff like that. Y'all know how the world gonna be. Just be yourselves. You understand? Vibe with the kid. Love y'all, man. We out of here. Holla. Shango Vibes. You know the vibe. I'm outside.